Welcome back to another episode of the John Gill Show. And on this episode, we're excited to have on Luminita Lumi Ispas with Century 21 SGR. Uh, she has been a real estate professional since 2001. 2002. 2002, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And as a real estate investor, as a broker, uh, she also trains and mentors different people through her uh, workshops uh, that she hosts for free, uh, mm -hmm. from my understanding. And uh, in addition to that, we've been working on several deals together. So thank you so much, Lumi, for being on the show. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, so Pleasure. talk Yeah, talk to us a little bit about uh, your real estate career. So you were a broker, an investor. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that. Absolutely. So I started actually in 2000 as an investor. Okay. Uh, as any respectable immigrant. Yes. Wanting to become a millionaire. Absolutely. <laughs> and wanting to be successful. And uh, I started reading books about how to achieve that dream. And um, it kept as a recurring thought and message through all the books I was reading that uh, re 80 to 90 percent of all millionaires have made or grown their fortune through real estate. So at that time, I did not understand what grow means, but mm -hmm. I understood what made means. So as I was looking at other ideas, I realized with my knowledge, experience, uh, education, real estate seems to be what attracted me the most. I uh, always wanted to be an architect to build houses. Nice. So, right. So I thought, oh, that's, you know, uh, perfect for me and um, start looking at uh, buying with no money down because of course came here with 200 bucks in my pocket and no money and after a while i was helping my uh, friends um, going with them at their their own appointments to buy properties and after a while they said well you know more than our realtors you know more about mortgage programs than our lenders out of a sudden you talk about llc's and trust and our attorney doesn't talk about these why don't you take your license so uh 2000 to got my license and I totally enjoyed from that moment on. Uh, and I remember he said on, the, on TV, uh, he said, do you like houses? Do you like people? You should be a realtor. I was like, that's me. That's right. I like houses, I like people. <laughs> that's me. And might as well is helping me on my investment trajectory. So that's how I started. Um, before I got my license though, I, uh, I started working in a property management company at Peak Properties. And uh, Peak was at the beginning, uh, you know, a smaller company at that time. So I uh, got to work directly with the owner. And and for those that don't know, Peak uh, Management, they're pretty big right now. I mean, they're yes. one of the larger uh, real estate management companies here in Chicago, um, I think right. in the state. Right. So, and I, I got so lucky because, again, I was learning everything directly from the owner. Um, and, and I remember him looking over properties or uh, analyzing properties and saying, oh, these, the numbers don't work. And I could not understand what he's talking about because what I was reading from my books, as, as you remember in those times, there were no YouTube, you know, not CDs right. or programs. I was just, you know, they're just books that you learn. There are no groups or yeah. investment uh, programs. So I was asking Mike all, all kinds of questions and uh, learn to analyze properties from him. So, so I feel like, you know, I was uh, very fortunate to learn from the best. And Mike is still one of my mentors today. That's awesome. I, right. When I have a bigger project, I call him. I'm like, what do you think? You know, so he's awesome. Uh, and then um, I looked for a school, which happened to find a real estate school right close to me in uh, Rasco Village at that time. Uh, Center 21 is GR. And I loved the owners. The teacher happened to be one of the owners. And then I met the second one, which was at that time, uh, she was just chosen as a president of NAR, I believe, Chicago Association of mm. Realtors, okay. right? The first Asian uh, woman to be a president of uh, CAR. So it was pretty cool. So I said, well, that's a great example. Uh, I, and they were both uh, in development. Uh, they were helping selling a lot of developments in the city. So I joined the office at that, in 2002, and there was no, uh, no return. Oh. And uh, Within four or five years, uh, I started doing seminars uh, to teach people about REOs. Uh, we called them foreclosure at that time. It was pre-2006. That's <laughs> so, right. That's right. Uh, so uh, there were like five, six REOs on the market in the whole Chicago area at any given times. And uh, I was getting them actually under contract and uh, teaching those seminars. And then by 2007, as you know, the market crashed. By then, I had a small portfolio. I had... Uh, I bought lots with partner. I had plans and permits to go to start building. Mm -hmm. And I felt that something was coming and I didn't start building. I was like, well, let's oh, wait wow. for a okay. year. Right. And then, of course, everything got worse and worse. So in the end, I did a short sale on my double lot plans permit. I sold everything as a, in a short sale. And my own home, I had to do, I had to do a foreclosure because uh, the bank will not negotiate short sales. And 
it was also a great year for me in business 2007. I had a lot of listings, a lot of buyers. So when the funding cut, I think I had like 20 deals that stopped. Wow. And we started opening up uh, rentals because nobody was doing rentals and we had all these listings we couldn't couldn't sell. So we started doing rentals, then short sales because people couldn't uh, afford, uh, you know, to, to sell them to come up with cash from closing. So I was calling banks. I probably was one of the first realtors in the city to do short sales <laughs> until I find a great attorney to negotiate them. Um, and by 2010, I lost all my portfolio. So by now, I used all my savings. Uh, I cash out my kids' college funds, my uh, pension fund to support my, my portfolio. Uh, but it was not sustainable. So by 2010, everything was uh, sold, got to a bankruptcy. And um, I had to come up with a new plan. Now I'm 10 years in the in, the, in real estate, right, since I started. And now that I'm back to zero, I'm worse because I have bad credit, no money, and the income has dropped significantly, right? It's so been very to, scary. Right, right. Yeah. So it was, uh, and still we didn't know where the, uh, the no end in, 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 in you sight know, at in all. Sight, right, thank you. Uh, so I, start, I had to come up with a program uh, with um, another way to invest. And I remembered what Mike taught me. And I looked at a lot of uh, lenders that didn't lose properties because I started analyzing the moment, you know, the pain. Uh, mm -hmm. kind of subsided and I was looking for a solution, I started analyzing wh which landlords, which homeowners didn't lose the properties. And I noticed that the people that had multiple units, so three, four units, um, did not lose. There are not that many three, four flats for sellers, for closures or short sales. There were mostly condo houses and then some two flats, like mm -hmm. a lot of two flats. And then very rarely three and four. And the three and four that they were foreclosed on, they were the ones that need a lot of work and they were vacant. But most of them don't need a lot of work. So the owner not that couldn't rent them out because because of the condition. Mm -hmm. So of course couldn't support the mortgage. And um, that's that's one thing that I noticed. The other thing, uh, working with investors, uh, they're buying cash, you know, the small condos. I kept asking them, you know, about their other port properties. And at one point I noticed a trend. These people had fixed rates, 30 year mortgages. And uh, some of them have taken FHAs. I haven't worked with FHA until 2011. <laughs> I mean, I was 10 years okay. in the business because uh. everybody was doing the no doc, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the easy, easy loans with a higher interest rate. Right, right. Right. So, so I start learning about the loans and created a plan how to become a millionaire and financial free because after 10 years of working, you know, really hard working uh, two jobs most of the time um, until, you know, I, I could make it in real estate and, um, investing everything in real estate, I actually missed out on seeing my kids growing up. So my mom was raising the kids and li uh, leaving home when the kids were sleeping, coming back when the kids were sleeping. And uh, they were coming up with me, of course, they're open houses Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> so uh, so that's what the early days. So I realized something. I said, you know, the millions, millions of dollars are not important. What's important is the time, time with your family, time to do what Absolutely. you want and not, you know, time um, and not the fear of losing in case the economy changes. Because I was working as hard as I worked before, right? And I still lost everything. So it was not my my focus or my uh, work ethic. It was the economy. So I said, how can I buy now so that doesn't happen? Uh, and of course, cash flow came first. Cash flow with fixed interest rates. And when you don't so have- So that was the solution, cash flow and fixed, fixed in interest rates. Okay. Fixed loans, right. Fixed And 30 years fixed because uh, by chance I sold a couple properties and uh, for people that have had their homes for over 20 years or one of them had it for over 30 years but they refinanced before the market crashed and they put their loans one in 10 and a 10 year mortgage one on a 15. Now they couldn't afford the payments. And because of the situation they couldn't refinance. Mm. So I, I realized a 30-year mortgage is I, ideal. You want to pay off a 30-year mortgage in 15 years or in 10? Absolutely, you can do it. But you cannot switch a 10-year mortgage into a 30. You have to fully refinance, right? So I realized that if I have a 30-year mortgage, I can pay it up the way I want. And then if situations arise where the economy is not working, I lose my job or my I, I'm not healthy, uh, then in that case, I can just pay the 30-year mortgage payment and then switch back up when uh, when finances are in better better condition. So th those were some of the lessons. And in my seminars, that's that's what I always tell people. If you're afraid of what happened, you can easily mitigate that by buying cash flow in property. And even if you buy your own property, your own home, uh, condo, make sure, number one, it is rentable. 
So, uh, because again, some of the short sales I've done in downtown are on condos where the owners could have kept them, but the buildings wouldn't allow rentals. So we had to do short sales. That happens a lot. You know, a lot of people want to think that the Chicago, they think immediately downtown, it'd be great mm -hmm. to be in downtown, but that's probably one of the pitfalls of investing in downtown, which is the cash flow issue. Right. So, cash flow and also rental. Like uh, you, you, even if you Well, meaning home, that because they can't rent, yeah, oh, you yes. can't cash flow. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. So that's why I always say there are two rules. You buy your own home, single family or condo. Uh, you have to make sure if you have to move because people have a short term vision. They don't realize that, you know, we, we hope to stay in a place for a certain amount of years, but things change. Yeah. People get married. They have kids. Yeah. They, you know, they move with their jobs. Things again happen, right? So you need to move. So in case you need to move and the economy doesn't allow you to sell it or you haven't built enough equity to sell it, you have to rent it. So as long as you at least are covered, your expenses are covered and have a little bit of room to cover, you know, uh, commissions, rental commissions, any um, unexpected repairs, then you are going to be fine. So, um, so again, unless you buy a house for cash, make sure it's rentable and make sure if you need to move out, it cash, uh, it, uh, you are, it's going to cash flow. The other thing uh, that came up in my seminars, a lot of people kept saying, well, you are teaching us to buy buildings uh, and you are teaching us to spend a lot of money on these buildings. And, um, you know, we've learned that we should always buy small. And what, uh, what, what that made me realize is that People wear the same hat when they buy for themselves and when they buy investment. They don't separate the mm. two purchases. As an, When you wear the investment hat, you buy a property that your tenant is going to pay off, that you want as uh, in the best location you can, right? Highest um, return you can have, and uh, long, easy to manage. Right. So that's why versus when you buy for yourself, you buy the kitchen that you like, <laughs> the number of bedrooms and beds that you like. Sure, sure. <laughs> right. Comfort. It's comfort. Right. So it's a completely different conversation. I can't even tell you how many investors I will go out with and say, oh, I will never live here. Like, well, you don't have to. to live. Right. 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 So right. I'm not buying for you to live Correct. here. This is for tenants. Correct. So uh, so that's why I say when you buy for yourself, yes. You should buy comfortable. You want to be able to afford it. And if possible, buy investments first so you have the cash flow pay your own mortgage. Um, but when you buy investment, because number one, the tenants pay off your mortgage, you want to buy the highest you can. Be uh, also, you're going to get the highest tax deduction because you're going to get depreciation. And most of the people that buy investments, they have pretty high income. So the depreciation absolutely will help them a lot, right? The extra tax deduction. So. Because if you look in the future, if you look 10 years from now, let's say you buy, uh, you, Jonathan, I'm going to give you the small one, okay? okay. So you, go, you buy a four flat. <laughs> sure, sure. That's 300,000. I buy a four flat that's 600,000. Now, both of us dealing with the same number of kitchens, same numbers of tenants, same number of HVAC units, right? So in the same time, we're dealing, we're going to manage the same tenants, we're mm. going to handle the same property. But 10 years from now, Historically, properties double every ten years, right? So let's let's look at it. You paid off maybe a hundred thousand, which is not true because in ten years you don't pay that much. But for easy numbers, we'll say a third. You owe two hundred and your property is worth six hundred. Not bad, not bad at all, right? But I bought the six hundred thousand. Now mine it's I owe only four and it's worth one point two million. And remember, both of us dealt with the same four tenants. We remodeled the same four kitchens. We fixed up the same one roof, right? The same for HVAC. So in case you are not a big investor and you can buy maybe one property in your lifetime or only a few, which one do you want to buy? Oh, okay. I've never seen that point of view. Yeah. yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. Because you and you see, and as I share, share with you in 2010, I really sat down and analyzed everything. Mm -hmm. And I and because I had now 10 years, because uh, when I started buying was 2000 and that my first purchase didn't go through. Uh, if you can believe this. I have a Monday closing on a three flat in Austin, actually, and uh, Friday went for closure. Huh. Two days before my closing. Unbelievable. Oh, wow. Three days before my closing. <laughs> Unbelievable. So that was my first experience with, uh, you need to have a good agent and a good team. Good attorney, <laughs> right. good agent, <laughs> broker, right? Yeah. That, that matters a lot. Absolutely. Of course. <laughs> How come nobody caught on that, right? So, uh, but what was important to me is like, I, I realized that 10 years uh, go fast. 
So I start looking in terms of every 10 years, I plan 10 years ahead and I plan whatever I buy. Of course, you know, I might sell it faster, sooner, but I buy long term. I do not buy the short term. So uh, so I always look long term. So I remember walking this exercise I just did with you for myself, because first I thought like everybody else, why risk it? Because this is what the investor will tell you. Why risk it? I'm like, risk what? Same for tenants, <laughs> same for kitchens, same for, and guess what? If I'm paying 600 for my building, it's probably in a, somehow you'll call a more popular neighborhood where probably tenants are easier to find, stay longer, and maintain the property better. So in the end, I think you got the shorter side of the stake by buying the 300,000 for flat, right? Right, right. So yeah, so lesson like this that, that I've learned, you know, I teach in the in the seminar and uh, I already have a lot of clients that have become millionaires now by by following that. And it was interesting for me because it's a, I have a three to five year plan, three properties, and that should create your million and that should make you financially free, financially secure, let's call it, meaning, um, give you enough cash flow from these three properties to cover your minimum expenses. Like if you lose your job tomorrow, you know, what do you really have to pay uh, every month, right? So if you don't want to live paycheck to paycheck anymore, if you want to live um, in a better, to, to have a better life, right? To If you want to quit your job or anything, you can. And um, I've had clients that, I'm not kidding, the first building changed their life. Clients where the wife, stay home to raise the kids and went back to school and got the degree in uh, certified nursing, which farther What a great testimonial. It, it's unbelievable. Like I had another one. And this girl is one of my best example. I, when I met her, she was 18. Uh, we were at a landmark education uh, event. Yeah, I know landmark. Yes. Good. <laughs> awesome. The landmark forum. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So we were actually not in landmark forum. We were doing the CLP course. So they have a number of courses okay, after. Okay, got it. Yeah. So she comes in where I'm in a parking lot, like, you know, paying for my, my car to go upstairs. And she comes to me and she said, I heard you t talking about real estate. And, uh, I, you know, I want to be an investor. She looks like 12, okay? She's 18, <laughs> but she looks like 12. So I said, okay. It's like my I sister. Right, and I know, yeah. I said, do you work? Do you have a job? Because <laughs> you need to qualify for, she said, yes. I said, okay, uh, yes. Uh, she said, could you help me? I'm like, absolutely. Here's the address of my office. Here's the date of my next seminar. She said, okay, well, that's in two weeks. Is there anything I can do bef uh, before then? I'm like, really? You know, most of my investors are like, okay, I'll see if I can do it. You know, people that I invite usually. And this girl is so eager. So I said, sure, here, three books. Uh, write it down. Have you read uh, Have you read Think and Grow Rich? No. I said, okay, write it down. Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. What about how to make friends and influence people? Dale Carnegie. No. Okay, write it down. And the third, I say, how much do you know about money? She said, well, I'm emancipated. I'm on my own. I have a budget. I said, okay, so I want you to read The Richest Man in Babylon. And she said, okay. Yes. You are not going to believe this. Two weeks later, she shows up uh, about 45 minutes before the class. And she said, you know, I came in a little early to see if you have more books for me. And, I, and I'm standing there. Like this girl was studying. She was a full-time student. She was working full-time. And she read these three books in two weeks. Unbelievable. And she was 18, right? Wow. Yeah, they took me a little longer than that. That's me fantastic. too, right? <laughs> I discovered them. She's a speed a lot reader. Later. Great. So I said, okay, I gave her, you know, I can't even remember right now what I gave her, but the second step I gave her others. She said in the seminar, I said, I want to buy a four flat. I said, great. Let me put you in touch with my lender. So I gave her a lender's phone number. Now, of course, she has no down payment because she's barely living out of what she pays, but she had a $10,000 bonus coming in January. And she was like, I really want to buy before I turn 19. And she was turning 19, I think, in February. So I said, okay, let's play for that, right? So we found a, a four flat in, um, um, what is it, Lake Villa. It was like four units, like kind of like a quad, like uh, mm -hmm, all four mm -hmm. corners, one floor. The train is in the back, but it has like eight parking spots. And the numbers work in such a way where we did a two or three K uh, uh, streamline. So she took $30,000 for, for a little bit of rehab, separate utilities. She got the unit for free and she was making about $400 a month. Hmm. Listen to this, the day we closed, so, uh, you know, with a, 10, 30, uh, with a two or three K um, streamline, you get half of the money up front. She didn't bring a dollar at the closing because in the end we didn't need to. Second, after the closing, she gave notice to her job because that free unit plus the 450 made her financially secure. That all was all she needed. And then she focused 100% on school. She got her real estate license 
And she discovered that real estate was not for her, but she wanted to be a financial uh, uh, planner. Uh, she got her license and then she started working at about 22 for Nord, uh, Northern Trust. She was the youngest and she became the rookie of the year, the, like the first year, as soon as she got her licenses. Unbelievable. And she has now like about four properties. But it's this girl, like if she didn't buy that building, who knows, you know, she would have been back in, in her job. You know, the other client where his wife went back to school. I have another client that her wife get, uh, went to stay home again and she became well, a pharmacist. I mean. Well, and that's the thing. Um, Real estate can change the trajectory of your life. And, and that's something that I try to tell everyone is it's, you know, you don't know what, what will come of it, but yes. everyone, doesn't matter what you do. I mean, you don't have to be a full-time real estate investor. You can no. just own real estate because yes. it can change and have a huge impact. And so what you're saying is uh, validates all of that. So thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, so you said something earlier. You said, okay, the streamline. Talk to us about, because some of the programs that I've seen you work a lot, yes. you know, and now I understand why. But uh, is FHA, FHA 203Ks, yes. you know, some of the deals that we've worked on. And can, can you explain some of the benefits to those programs and why you love those? Absolutely. Um, so I think it's probably back uh, <laughs> due to the fact that in, 2000, in 2010, when I started again, I didn't have any money, right? So I was thinking a lot of the investors don't have money. They're like me. So, and also not a lot of credit. Well, FHA, it's one of the loans that will allow you to borrow more credit than a conventional and because they go, you know, more loan to value. Right, with conventional, you have to come up with a higher down payment, anywhere from 10% to 25 and yes. or 10% plus. 10% plus, right. But as an investor, usually it's 20, 25. Okay. On his, on, only owner occupant, it's oh, got a it. lower okay. down payment, okay. right. So, um, and with FHA, all you have to live in a property is one year. So after that, it becomes an investment property. And FHA also helps you because their loans for three and four units have, um, two rules in place. One of, well, one rule that will help you actually mostly. It's 75% of income has to cover 100% of mortgage. And when I'm saying mortgage payment, it's uh, principal, interest, PMI, tax, and insurance. So so when you work it that way, if you buy a four unit, usually you get the fourth unit for free, right? Of you course. 40, 40 for free. Well, think of how much just that change people's life. Because the biggest uh, thing that stops people from buying homes, not just investors, but any like any real estate buyer, right? Like homeowner or uh, investor is the down payment. So with the FHA, you solve that problem because all you need is three and a half percent down payment. And the best part is this can be gifted. You also need reserves, but the reserves can be in your 401k. Now, the gift can come from anyone or a relative? Uh, mostly relatives, um, maybe your, your, uh, the company you work for or nonprofit. So it, 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 there are some rules about it, right? So it cannot be from the realtor or from the seller. <laughs> <laughs> that won't work. Right, right. Yeah. And uh, the other part is they allow up to 6% in closing cost. So now it saves you because usually, you know, they're not that high, the closing costs. They're 3 4%, whatever they are. But you know, having that uh, coming in to help you now, it, save, it helps you with your savings. Because um, remember when I, when I said it, when I learned that 80 to 90% of real of millionaires make it or make or grow their fortune through real estate was, you know, I, I studied that, that statement and I keep saying 80 to 90 because some mm. books say 80, some books says, say 90. So I don't know which one is real. But even if it's 80, I mean, it's eight out of 10 millionaires. Come on. I don't know yeah. any other odds. I mean, those yeah, are. Exactly. I'd rather take those odds than go to Vegas. Exactly. <laughs> well, forget about that. Is you know when you because I study so many books about millionaires, you know, you know when you look at it, what are the other chances? You you have to finish, you know, a master, a PhD, and a lot of times you still don't make enough money to uh, to become a millionaire, or to open up businesses, or you know, be extremely creative to create apps or startups or um, be somebody like you know. Key West, right? Like you are, you are inventing amazing, or Beyonce invest, inventing amazing songs, write amazing right, songs, right. and you get the the royalties. Right. But otherwise, you know, what are you going to get is so. So, like I said, the the biggest um, impediment in buying real estate is down payment. So FHA allows you to buy with low down payment. So a lot of times I tell my clients, even though they're not even thinking about buying first a home, mm -hmm. that they cannot even afford a home, I say, why would you buy a home first? Let's buy an investment first. You have to live there in a, ye a year. We'll buy a three, four unit building, live there for a year. The down payment is going to be easy. And the fact that you live free for, uh, for a year 
it, it helps you save that money because I'm not saying spend that money, right? Now you are not paying your rent $1,500, that's $18,000 a year. You are going to get on the other three units uh, will be considered investment. You're going to get taxes and usually it's at least five grand. I mean, I've had clients that took 12,000 back. Hmm. You know, one single guy that made over 100,000, he got $12,000 back and for his first year in taxes between tax deductions, you know, vacancy, because you're doing also some remodeling. Like, it was amazing. Like he also quit his job and became a consultant because when and we're going to provide his accountant's number. No, just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, for disclosure, we are not attorneys. Right, right, CPAs. right. We're not finan- Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Correct. And 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 if we're not even talking as realtors here. We're talking as investors because we're talking correct. about neighborhoods. Correct. You know? Correct. Yeah. So we have to do the disclosure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Disclaimer. For sure. Um, so yeah. So uh, so FHA again is great uh, because it allows you to borrow more than other- otherwise you could. Uh, helps you with the down payment and it helps you to build now down payments because think about like let's like the example that we just got right which i just gave you you save fifteen hundred dollar a month in rent that's eighteen thousand you save another five thousand let's say in tax like and and that's very conservative that's twenty three thousand dollars now that's a five percent down payment on a single family home or sometimes ten percent because like we said the, the house that you buy that's the one that you buy small the buildings we buy high Mm -hmm. because we want more depreciation more paid off. Your net worth is growing every month. So um, I was looking at the payment, a client of mine who bought the four flat in uh, Rogers Park, not Rogers Park, Jefferson Park um, about nine months ago. And he got the, with the with the FHA an interest rate that was just about 3% or so, a little bit over 3%. So on a 600 or so loan, his principal payment was $1,200. That's unbelievable. I, I, I could mean, not understand that. You can't find any. You can You can barely find a two bedroom apartment in Chicago for that amount. Right. right. And his principal payment is that. So his tenants not just they give him you know fifteen hundred dollar a month in in, in um, uh, cash flow, but they are paying for him like a for saving twelve hundred dollars a month, right? And starting from there because you know the principal is up. Plus this guy because he's in a high uh, tax bracket, he will probably get at least a nine thousand dollar back in, in taxes. When you do the math, that's a salary. You know, when you and, and this is after tax because the real estate, it all, also has um, a lot of tax benefits and is taxed differently. The income from the real estate is taxed differently. So, um, but we're talking about leverage actually, because when you ask me about why, why FHA. So first of all, like I said, people don't have a lot of down payment. Second is leverage. You buy stock in order to go to buy a thousand dollar worth of stock, I need a thousand dollars. But you see, if I want, if I buy a million dollar worth of, uh, let's say with a four unit uh, for a million dollar with a three and a half percent down payment, all I need is 35,000. As an investor, I will need 250,000 down payment to buy that million. So think about the rate of return on that money. Most mm. of these deals, my clients get their money back within a year. They, like who's giving you 100% return the first year and after that infinite return? And not even adding the principal, not adding, like I said, the tax, not adding appreciation. So, so that's why I love the, oh, the other a reason I like the FHA. Remember when I said that some of the three and four flats that I saw in foreclosure were because the properties were old, mm-hmm. uh, need uh, work. Um, let's say you are a young buyer. Okay. First time buyer. You don't have a lot of money. I mean, you just, you're a young professional. Yes. Didn't have time to save money, right? Yeah. Uh, so you're thinking, what am I going to get myself into? I'm buying a three or four uni building. Now I have three, three or four kitchens, bathrooms, roofs, HVAC. How am I going to pay all that? if they break, right? So one of the biggest fears uh, that uh, first-time buyers have, it's, it's repairs. If you use a 2 or 3K, you take care of all that upfront and you do, you finance it, the bank will finance it for you because the way the 2 or 3K FHA yeah. works, let's say you buy a 400,000 building and you need a 100,000 loan to remodel it. So you are uh, buying from the seller, uh, taking a, you know, pay the seller 400, but the way the bank works, they are looking at the total price, 400 for purchase plus 100 for rehab. So you're going to have to put down three and a half percent on the whole 500,000, right? Uh, which is about 17,500, I believe. If you negotiate the seller closing costs, now your leverage is even higher because you don't even bring that 3% at, at closing, right? And you keep that as reserves and you have 100,000 to fix up the building. And, um, and remember when I said there are two fail safes in these loans? One, like I said, is the um, self-sufficiency rule. The second is when you do two or three Ks, you get a two or three K consultant. So you kind of get 
it's not a project manager, but it's similar. So you get somebody to help you evaluate the bids from the contractor, uh, look over the the work, because the way the bank will pay the contractor, will ha- he will the bank will have to see the work performed. They pay only on performed work. Mm. So the two or three can consult, will, let's say the, the, the contractor has done 25% of job and they want to get paid. They're going to submit a draw, and then the two or three can consult and goes to the property, inspects it that is done. The buyer can go with him or mm. go at his own pace, right? And the two of them have to approve the job. If the two of them approve the job, a check will be written the contractor's name and the buyer's name, the new owner's name. So the owner has to endorse the check. So the contractor has to keep to do the job right and to keep the buyer, the the new owner and lord yeah. happy, right? So now the buyer is getting a br- almost brand new building, right? And all the money, it's at, with only three and a half percent down payment, the low interest rate. I mean, you know, use credit cards, 25%. Right? Yeah, the program says itself. I mean, it's, it, all the benefits are outlined right there. Yeah. You know, the leverage, the the fact that you can, you know, and also the fact that you, we know that not every property out there is in 100% best shape, right? Absolutely. And, you know, so so if a, and a seller knows that, too, like if they come in and a straight FHA loan, they're going to say, well, hey, I've got all of these issues here. I don't think my property will qualify. So, you know, the two or three K's and the streamlines help to also uh, mitigate that. Yes. That's amazing. So and, and then so now what I've seen also is, you know, some of the deals that we're working on in certain areas, like I, I know what you said was you advocate looking at not just the area, but more on the cash flow and on the returns. Absolutely. Okay, so let's go through some examples on because there's, a lot of people that's what they do. They you know they, oh well you know I, I I don't feel too comfortable here or you know this is not where I would live because of the you know I don't know they don't have a park at the end of the block or whatever it is. Okay, but. At the end of the day, we're not, they're not living there, right? right? I mean, or, or they won't live there, let's say, one year after the fact, they may not have to live there. Yes. And, and then for the rest of their life, you know, they were able to pick up something at a reasonable price with huge cash flow. So uh, explain exactly some of, some of those details there as to, like, why if somebody comes up to you and says, you know, well, I, don't, I don't really like this building or I, you know, uh, it's a little too far for me. I got you. So first of all, FHA has uh, um, cap limits per county. So for example, two units, three units, four units, you have a, you have a, a limit, loan limit amount. Okay. So in Chicago, if you want to buy, let's say if I want to buy in Lincoln Park, I cannot, it's way over the cap, right? So for a three flat, right now it's about 610, for a four flat is 750, with that including the, per, the down payment three and a half, because I always look at, uh, at the whole payment. Mm-hmm. So if I'm looking for a three flat for 610, and if I have to also rehab it, I have to buy, let's say 510, plus 100 to rehab, 600, right? And it, it's not easy to find them. Plus remember, I have to uh, meet the self-sufficiency criteria of 75% of income to cover 100% of rent is not happening because some of the prices in um, a lot of the a lot of neighborhoods have gone up so much that the rents don't work out uh, so a lot like of course if the numbers work i tell buyers go ahead and buy but a lot of times the numbers don't work i can I, like now i sound like my like mike right 20 years ago <laughs> when you tell me it numbers goes don't full work. circle <laughs> it goes full circle and i got frustrated at that time i said but let's make them work well then i have to offer two hundred thousand under and you know now I understand, but it took me so long, right, to understand what he meant, because you know again you need to make the numbers work, and eventually you're going to move out. And if you are a young professional, believe me, you're not going to stay home. You're going to be out with your friends. You are going to be at work. You are home only sleeping. You are not. You don't have yet a family or uh, kids to take to the park. So I don't understand why you are so con- concerned about the park, right? Or, or would you actually really go to the neighborhood bar? No, you're probably going to go in the cool bars. They just open out, in, you know, in the hot neighborhoods. That's what you're going to go no matter what. Yeah. So, and um, there is another aspect that I like, uh, which I'm going to introduce, um, because I've been in the business for so long. I've looked at neighborhoods changing. I've seen so neighborhoods change, so many neighborhoods changing, right? Uh, my office, 
<clears throat> when I got my license, you know, they had an office in the West Loop and one in the South Loop. And I remember going first time in the West Loop. I mean, imagine early 2000 going in the West Loop or South Loop. I could not understand why would they open those off. Of course, they, they, they were smart. They understood what was happening at that time. I didn't. All I was seeing was warehouses, empty lots, right, graffiti. And I was like, I'm not going in this neighborhood. I will not. Why would I work here? Why would my clients want to come here? Most of my business was on the north side at that time. I remember going to South Loop and the same thing. Like there were a few high rises and then gaps in between. And they're like, Lumi, this is the path of expansion. And I came from Romania, from a Eastern European country. Uh, you know, our housing there is old. I mean, when I'm saying old, there are gen like, like thousands, you know, 10, 10, 20 generations <laughs> in the same house, right? Like, yeah. yeah. And in the same house, usually the house gets rebuilt and sure. you build another one in the courtyard. This is how it works. Nobody sells the house, they give them to their kids. Yeah. So, <laughs> path of expansion did not <laughs> come into my, did not, I could not even have the concept, it, right? Yeah. Comprehend. So, uh, you know, but then. Well, it's interesting that forward. you say that. That's interesting yeah. that you say that because. You know, there's a lot of people, you know, a lot of immigrants too. that. I think it's the same thing yes. in, in their countries. So, okay, that's great. I would have never, since I was born here, yes. I, I see it a little bit clearer. So right. it's great to get that point of view. Right. right. For us, right. It's very little to build. So mm. you, you tear off something to build. Right. Um, but that was very interesting to me. And um, as, as I start understanding and seeing the neighborhoods developing, because our offices were there, I was there all the time. Because we still had meetings, events. So even though I was working on the uh, Lakeview office, I was still going to this monthly. And seeing how the lots were filling up, seeing how the warehouses were becoming condos, selling some of these new developments, and seeing who's moving in. And I could not comprehend why were these doctors, lawyers, young professionals are moving in this neighborhood. I mean, I'm looking on the street and there's nothing. You talk about parks, parks and bars, there was nothing. You know? Yeah. So, and... Uh, it, but then I was listening to the experienced agents that were in the business 20, 30 years, and these people are talking about what's coming up and and the I, trends, the trends, right? Because my focus was investments, cash flow, but I was at that time I was not yet focused on uh, neighborhood growth. Hmm. And in time, when the market crashed, um, I can't remember who I was talking to, but uh, I was at an event. I go to a lot of uh, real estate conferences and events, and I was at an event, and I I was talking to someone, and I love statistics, so statistics will grab me right away. And somebody said, the tipping point in the neighborhood is when you have more homeowners, owner occupant, buying in a neighborhood than than uh, and, and tenants moving out. So the moment there are more homeowner occupants than landlords, the neighborhood changes, because now you know the front yard is clean; it has flowers. They have it, what we call pride of uh, home ownership, where exactly. you can see it. Yeah. Yeah, if they see, you know, a newspaper in front of the house, they will pick it up, right? If they see graffiti on a the garage, they're going to call the... 311. 311. If they see noise in the corner, or they will call police. So out of a sudden, the neighborhood is changing fast. And it's it's the tipping point. Like if you read, right, if you yes. read the tipping point, you know you know what I'm talking about. And uh, and there is, this tipping point, a lot of time, it, it's impossible to see it, right? But as for us in real estate, we can see who's buying. Because when you look at the CMA, when you when you look at closed properties, you see what type of financing has been done. So you can see right away down, low down payments also owner occupants because investors, like I said, have to have a higher down, pay, down payment. So when, when I when I notice in a neighborhood that are a lot of um, uh, rehabs done, you know, the permits on the doors or sometimes no permits on the door, but, you know, the, the windows covered or, <laughs> or the sure. garbage in the front <laughs> or, you know, like for sale signs and um, new construction fences and uh, and also, you know, owner occupants, you, you already start noticing it. And again, now it's I have over 20 years, I have 21 years now of mm -hmm. experience. So I think it, it takes a little time to get to to form. Um, but but you start noticing. Uh, I, actually, I just remember something. So this February, I was selling a building in um, a Br South Brunsville. So I go with my buyer. He actually lives in the area. So he's and I said, wow, this neighborhood is changing. And he looked at me and says, how do you know? I've been here forever. I don't see any change. I said, and, and we are standing on the steps of this, uh, this is a three flat. And I said, do you see that house? And I look at the, on the street. And I said, look at the first house under, uh, it was like a T street. I said, the, the first house on the street. He says, yes. Do you see anything different? No. New windows. The outdoor is already done. Landscaping is done. He said, okay. Look at the second one. 
well, that one has plywood in it. I said, yes, but look what's on the plywood. Said, well, it's a permit. I said, what does that mean? It's changing. I said, okay, look at the third one. He said, well, what's up with that? I said, look at the landscaping. Also yeah. new windows, completely redone. You can see it is completely done. It has, uh, you know, uh, cameras in front. Look at the next one. Lumi, that's a vacant lot. I said, yes, but look at the constru new construction fence. That's something somebody is building. And out of a sudden he got it and he looks across the tree and said, Oh my gosh, the next one is done too. The next one is done too. I said, that's it. And this whole street, there are only five buildings that are waiting to be done. Everything else is either in construction or done. So he got it. He was like, I've been living in this neighborhood. I didn't see this. I said, because, you know, my eye is trained. I walk in and I know already. You ask me, I'll share with you. Yeah. But a lot of times, right, we get trained. You and me? I love it. Yeah. We, yeah, we pick up on things yeah. that other people won't pick up. Sure. So, or catch like if you uh, read the news the dna chicago or whatever is happening in chicago cranes. as soon as yeah, cranes right you hear that the new train station is coming in we already know what's going to happen now the commercial is coming the infrastructure around the train uh, starts to get developed yeah and the infrastructure you, you just said the, the the golden word city puts infrastructure in we know what's happening it's every time ev every time city knows a lot more than they let <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll give another example. And uh, about six years ago, I bought a condo in uh, West Loop. Uh, interestingly, my client asked me to buy it. So I went there to listen. She said, why don't you buy it? There are not enough money in the property. I do not want to do any work. Like, I need somebody to buy it as is. And, and, and I'm barely breaking even. Can you just buy it? And, you know, and I look at her. I said, I just bought the fourth flat. I, I, I can't buy for a year. She said, well, can we do something and you buy it in a year? And I'm thinking, I don't know, it's a little expensive for me. And but then I kept thinking the next week I heard that the 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 train station on Morgan was opening. And it's Morgan and Lake, right? So nothing else was there. There was the big refrigerator building that that, that used to be the meat packer Packing district, district there. and there was a lot of and I, I went and I tried I drove the street because I by then I was already working in the West Loop in the West Loop office since 2008 I've been uh, I moved into the West Loop office and I drove the street guess what I saw noticed three quarter of the buildings built the businesses were closed now something is happening and I thought why would somebody with such a big building keep it closed unless they are developing, unless they have something else coming up? And I start thinking, if the city had a train station here when we have one not that far away, because we have two on both sides not that far away, something is happening. So I went back to the lady, I put a unit under contract. Six months later, Google is announced. Wow. The deal was made before. Google actually, uh, so, so my office was invited in the... Um, first day the Google open and they shared that in the negotiation they asked the city to open up a train station for them so Silver Bay negotiated that the city will open up a train station for them to open unbelievable so that's, the deal was done fantastic. ahead of the, tr the yeah, train station yeah. but you see you and me how would we know we're out of the loop yeah nobody no, none of our buyers or investors are going to be in that loop but if we look for cities announcing this big thing they already have a lot done. So all those businesses are already sold. So they are, they, they are, they are already well, congrats. owned. Congrats, that was a good buy. Oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> that was actually the, my best buy out of everything I own, I have to say. <laughs> like it almost doubled like in six years. So yeah, Fantastic. but uh, it, th th those are examples of how we, if we catch on, because most of people cannot buy 10 buildings in a year, right? They will buy one a year if they, if they can, or one every two years. Do your research. Look at the neighborhood and the neighborhood that we chose, because you started asking me why those, why the neighborhood, right? And how, why I'm asking my clients to buy in certain neighborhoods. Well, well, well no, remember, because we don't, we don't steer yeah. anybody in that, in, in that sense. But what we do is um, one of the, like, one of the questions that we get a lot is, oh, or not, not questions, but more concerns is, okay, well, it's a little too far away or it's not where I want to live. It's not where I want to be, you know, it's not where I want to live, you know, it's not, um, and so you answered that earlier when you said, well, first off, the fact that a FHA has loan limits yes. and then some of the areas like Lincoln Park, et cetera, you know, you're already past the loan limit immediately. Oh, if, even Jefferson Park is or even Jefferson over. Park. Everything exactly. Is getting over exactly. The 600 limit for three flat legal three flat. Yeah. So so if you look and you say, OK, well, you know, where else can I go and observe? And I think that's where you're going to get into yes. is like. We, we realize that there's a pocket, there's certain areas that like just the numbers make sense all day. 
Right. And because of we were talking earlier about the path of expansion, right? Mm -hmm. Every neighborhood will explode into a next because let's say you want it to be in Bucktown. If I'm looking back 15 years ago when Bucktown started, everybody wanted to be in Bucktown. But Bucktown is small. Yeah. And the rents, of course, you know, climbed immediately and the prices climbed immediately. Well, if you wanted, you, you had to go to Wicker Park to be able to afford something. And then you had to go to East Humble Park. If you, if you could not afford the Wicker Park, you went to East Humble Park. Well, now, out of a sudden, Wicker Park is going up. Is Humble Park is going up? Then you say, "Well, I want Logan Square." Log and that was the next one yeah. because again, it's all the time is the next, next. You want it to be in the West it's Loop. The next border. You went to United Center, right? Because right? you couldn't be in the West Loop. And what it pushes else? west because you can't go east because of the lake. Exactly. And right now, if and by the way, the downtown it's the the epicenter of everything. Because that's where the jobs are. That, that's where the, a lot of the hospitals are. A lot of the universities are. So that's where everybody's going. So in this case, you need to, you need transportation because you need to make it to the downtown. And you want to be not that long on the train. So if you look at where can I be to be close to downtown and to have transportation walking distance. And few, like about a year ago or so, I remember look, taking the map and say, okay, I need to start finding a place for these people because I have like 20 buyers and I, I have nothing to sell them, right? So I looked around the, the train station and then I got to the blue line. And I said, wow, why, wait a minute. It's United Center, but United Center already is high. And again, I can't find anything in United Center. East Garfield Park. So I said, oh, East Garfield Park. Wow, okay, good. Put it on the list. But I can't, ha we have to have a choice, right? So we can sh give somebody only one neighborhood. I said, what else? Well, let's go south of downtown. Like if I go south, Bronzeville, Bronzeville is almost untouchable. I haven't been able to sell anything in Bronzeville since spring because the numbers already are going the over the are, limits. The super high, yeah. Yes, and they're already getting over the FHL limits. Yes. So even if, let's say, I'm in a 20, 20 offers and somehow I will get it, I can buy it. The numbers won't make sense at that point. Yes. So then now I can go in Bronzeville. Pilsen, it's again exploded. You can't touch Pilsen. Um, then I'm looking at what else I have. You know, so you, you start going little by little, little till it's expensive. So I kept going, okay, well, let's go one neighborhood over. Oh, McKinley Park, great, but it's not that close to downtown, right? But it's good, it's great, but not that close. Then you go farther north, what else is there? And we go, to, we went to- Douglas Park or East Garfield. East well, Garfield. Douglas Park, Holman Square. Yes. Then you have, uh, yeah, East Garfield Park. And North Londale. Or so no, that's and North Londale. Yes. But yeah. of course, I want to be as east as possible because it's a huge neighborhood. Like sure. North Londale is a huge neighborhood. So if I can buy on the east side of North, because remember, everything is going to go slow, slow, slow. It will take years to move on another couple of blocks, another couple of blocks. So the way I kind of figure out, I'm going to buy as close to the hottest neighborhood as I can, walking distance to the train, close to, you know, universities, Hospitals, yeah. right? So that's kind yeah, of that's how we. That's we exactly went how by. I'm buying too. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly you know, and and it's it's interesting because you know we're talking about this for the first time, and that's actually how I buy with you know my partner. We we don't want to be where it's already popped. We want to get to where the trend is headed. Yes. You know, and just border, border. just border it. Yes. Because yes. because eventually it will get there. It yes. will absolutely get there, and we've seen it. Uh, we've tested the model, and it works. And it's great that you're also doing the exact same thing, and and. And that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and that, that's how our paths have crossed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> correct. That's why we're so good friends, right? Correct, it's, correct. We have the same views. Yeah. And so, yes. So, so, you know, and, and, that, and that's, that's fantastic. So, you know, what I would say is for anyone that is listening, you know, that is, uh, is kind of looking into buying, investing into real estate, you know, there's been some great golden nuggets that you've heard here, you know, one of which was, you know, don't always just go straight into the single family, look into something that the three the four units that the tenants are going to help pay and cover the mortgage you're going to live for free you'll be able to save you know x amount of dollars at the end of the year that then you know you can keep that building and then buy your house right yes. and so uh lumi everything that you've said has just been fantastic it has been gold and i know that our uh, that, that there's going to be a lot of people that are going to value this so thank you thank so you. much for you know coming on to the program and was there anything else that we might have not uh, touched on here that you might want to uh, explain to some of the viewers? The only thing is think long-term. Uh, really, it's, an, it's a long-term investment. If you buy long-term, even if you bought, let's say, in 2007, right now, price are above 2007. But the best part is when in 2011, in 14 years, you would have paid off at least a third of the mortgage, if not, and it will be still owned. You know, you, I mean, the... Um, price will be over the purchase price. Best part, 
you would have gotten tax deductions and cash flow if you bought right. So always, always, always buy right. right buying, buying right meaning ha you have to have cash flow. If you don't have the money to remodel a place, do not buy it. Either you get the financing in place that will remodel the place, or you have to have the cash or the partner or something. Because, um, again, what I've learned was take the 30-year fix. Pay it as a 15 if that's what you want. But take the 30-year fixed mortgage. Never buy with, without a fixed mortgage. The economy can change fa fast. If you don't believe the economy changed fast, think of COVID. <laughs> you know, it was one of those things that had nothing to do with the economy. <laughs> it was a health care, right? But they, that that's took the economy swan, down. The black yes. swan event. Right. Exactly. So after 2006, of course, the government is going to do their best not to ever get such a uh, such a problem on our hands. And uh, that already changed by changing the way the loans are given. So the loans are much tighter. Uh, actually, prior to 2006, uh, the foreclosure rate used to be 3%. Actually, um, that's kind of the historical foreclosure rate because people get sick, lose their jobs, whatever. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, after you know it went up, since 2011, the foreclosure rate has been one percent. Only since last year, it went up again. So that means that's fascinating. That it, it, it's that I, like I said, I like data. I'm a very uh, market statistic focused girl. So the way I know where the market is going by, I'm always watching what's happening, the inventory, the pendings, the like I said, who's buying where. Uh, I'm looking at like if the loans are available because if you have not, no loans available, there will be a problem, right? How, the, what what programs the government gives. So the government has been actually has moved very smart during COVID. So and if you think of if you're a tenant or a landlord, the landlord profited more than the tenant. Because the bank said, we're not going to foreclose on you. We're going to allow you to, to not pay mortgage, just pay your tax and insurance, and we can move the payments at the end. If you're a tenant, you have to pay your mortgage. Because if you didn't, and you are trying to take advantage of the moratorium, guess what? That's not for people not to pay the rent. The moratorium is saying, don't throw mother and kids out yeah, in the street if yeah. they lost the job because of COVID. But um, in the end, being a homeowner, we make money four ways. Uh, and and I feel like you know you want to be a landlord first before you be a homeowner. It, this is the biggest wealth building strategy in the world. You don't have to love real estate. You don't have to manage real estate if you don't like it. You know you need a good team. Uh, you know a good management company like <laughs> Jonathan's. Um, you need a, and when I'm saying a good team, you need a good realtor, lender that understands investment, attorney. Like I said, the whole structure has to be done right. Uh, but invest in real estate. The tenant will take care of you. The, you treat well the tenant, take care of the property, and um, the time and the tenants are going to take care of you. That was awesome. Lumi, thank you so much. And okay. if anyone wants to get a hold of you, what's the best way for them to reach you? So they can look up my website, which is luminitsaispes.com, or uh, and they can also sign up for my seminars there. They are uh, always the last Saturday of the month. Uh, okay. They're on Zoom right now. I would love to go back to person, person, but who knows? For now, it's on Zoom. Um, my phone number is 773-392-2906. My email is my first name, that last name at Gmail, so luminita at Gmail. I'm on social media, the same names. You go on every social media. So you want to spell that out real quick, just sure. for the audience? Uh, L-U-M-I-N-I-T as in Tam, A, dot I-S as in Sam, P as in Peter, A, S as in Sam, at gmail.com. So Luminita, that is best at gmail.com. Fantastic. Well, Lumi, it was great having you on the show. Uh, looking forward to getting more deals uh, uh, done here with you as well. Absolutely. And uh, thank you so much. And as always, if you like what you heard, please subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and we look forward to seeing or hearing from you all on the next episode. Thanks so much.